Hello Eagle fans, welcome to North Carolina Central's YouTube page. I'm Chris Hooks and in today's player profile we're taking a look at the 2009-2010 women's tennis team who went undefeated against MEAC opponents. Here's their story. The 2010 season in general um, went, what I'd like to say, went pretty much according to our goal plan, which is a pleasant surprise. Um, we had set early in the year, that is last fall, 2009, at the completion of one of our fall tournaments, we had set some team goals for the spring in particular, and that was to win the majority of our matches. Uh, as it all shook out, I think we were 11 and 12, I'm not exactly sure at the moment, but that came very close to meeting that goal. Um, of winning the majority of our matches. <clears throat> now, in my mind at least. Now, the, the other goal that we had set is we knew on our schedule we were facing off with six MEAC schools. Now, the MEAC is significant to us at this stage simply because that's the conference we're going into next year. Uh, so, in my mind, it was very important to create an image, right, from the very beginning. So, um, we set as a goal to, to face those six MEAC schools and, and beat each of the six MEAC schools. Now, uh, the image that I wanted to set is that, you know, we were going to be a force to contend with when we matriculated or moved into the MEAC um, as, a, as, a, as a university. Now, if you don't mind, let me share with you just briefly the philosophy I applied uh, as a coach and uh, the players, we all work together on this. The idea in, in um, and defeating the MEAC was not to play the MEAC. So we had opportunities in the fall to meet several of the MEAC schools in tournament play. And um, although some people weren't all that happy with the fact that I dodged that opportunity, I think it was key that we didn't show what we had. We didn't show our talent pool to any of the MEAC schools until the moment we walked out on the court and faced them one at a time in a dual situation. So we were an unknown entity and that gave us psychologically at least an edge. It's always a little bit scary when you look at, uh, you know, where you are and where you'd like to be and there's a gap in between and how, what do you do to close that gap? And you, you basically work off of assumptions. You assume that certain things are going to fall in place. And my assumptions included the quality and character of my players first and foremost. I looked at our players like Katarina Chorn, a returning veteran player. I looked at a new player coming, Olesa Palco, another new player. Uh, Cameron Chapman, who I knew would bring some force to our to our group, to our field. And I guessed that with these pieces in the puzzle, the top three or four positions in our lineup would be tough as nails. Meaning, if they didn't win, they would punish people. And so that assumption is what I plugged into the equation first of all. So I knew we'd be playing the opponents very closely in matches. And then if they flinched or, or got a little nervous, we'd pass them up and beat them. And that's what, that's what developed, that's what happened. Thankfully, that's what happened. The win over Hampton was um, was unexpected. I mean, even as I set the goals, Hampton was one of the six MEACs we needed to de defeat. But as I talked to the team about this, in my mind, I really didn't have a clear picture how that was possible because Hampton was powerful from top to bottom. But here again, what happened is our top three players in particular, Katarina Chorna, um, played at one. She played a very tough match, stayed on the court a long time, ultimately didn't win, but the rest of the Hampton players were watching to see what was going on in court one. They expected their number one player to win quickly. That wasn't happening. Chorna was at, on her shot for shot. Court number two, Elisa Palco. Palco was an unknown, a freshman, a young player. Uh, you know, a tendency to, to, to kind of blow up sometimes in critical situations. She stayed cool through the whole match and won. Court number three, another new player, Cameron Chapman. Ultimately, that was the match that decided uh, her contest decided the match. She stayed out on that court for two hours, three long sets, and just pulled it out in the end.
I think the significance is, is it carried a message clearly to other coaches. I mean, uh, beyond the MEAC, from that point on, Chris, wherever we traveled, one of the things the other coaches, the opposing coaches, be it a state university like UNCW or whatever, they'd say to us, we noticed in your schedule you beat Hampton. That's, that's a big win, coach. And so, you know, it, it was good for a coach to hear it. And I shared that with my players. I wanted them to understand the magnitude of that victory. Well, in my, my many, many, many years of being in competitions myself, and in tennis or in other sports, what, what unfolded at ANT in our tennis match is something that uh, I, I'd never coached through or seen before in, in tennis in particular. I, I, but we had a situation where the match started out with all the doubles play first, three doubles teams on the court, and uh, totally partisan ANT crowd on their home court. So our number one doubles team, Katarina Chorna and Olesa Palco, uh, just were flat, were, did not get off to a good start, simply because they had played three or four hours a day before, and three or four hours a day, we had played two matches in the previous day, so they were tired. So we found ourselves in a bad situation, down 2-7, first team to win eight, eight games, wins the whole, whole, um, the whole, whole match. There was a, a lot of people who cheered against us, it was like screaming, it was like a soccer match. So that was a big distraction for me and Alessa. So when we started playing, it was like all distracted and we needed to concentrate and play what we know how to play. Plus we were very tired. So we started losing, but then we were losing badly. But then when everybody started cheering, college was cheering for us, uh, Cameron, I remember, started giving us plans and every, all the other girls. So me and Alessa, we started going like point by point. We didn't make a goal to win a game. There was just a goal to win next point, next point, next point. That's about it. That's how we did. Yeah, I knew that we're gonna win the match from the very beginning. Just we shouldn't have never lost. We got so distracted by people who were cheering against us. That's all. So I always knew that we can win. I was happy, I proved myself that the impossible is nothing, you can do everything, you can make miracles in a sport, and sport is basically like a life, so you can make anything you want. Never give up, always go for the most you can. Gordas are love. <laughs>